Our cities are failing us. That affects us all. Is this all future generations can look forward to? I like to have a city where I don't need to worry about emissions and my health. What can we do to improve the way we move in our cities? The mover is very smart. Join us on a journey where architects, engineers, and activists face up to the challenges of our future urban mobility. Traffic chaos. Worldwide, every day. There are some 47 million cars on Germany's roads, enough for two out of three adults to be driving at the same time. That's the highest level ever. In Berlin alone, 87,000 new cars were registered in 2019, despite growing traffic problems. Berlin is a city with like loads of public transport, with okay bicycle paths. And we see all these uh, cars next to the university building where people, like the students, basically have free public transport and they still come by car. And I think that's not good. All over the world, urban traffic pollution is choking us of the air we need to breathe. People around the world are demanding change. After more than 100 years, is the car's dominance of our ever more crowded cities finally coming to an end? The urban environment is occupied with cars and nobody has the freedom to live in the city in a more natural way. And in the future, of the cities uh, is a future of urban mobility in a new way. The global design studio Graft is developing visions of our future urban mobility. Its founders Lars Krückeberg and Thomas Willemite are specialists in urban planning and sustainable architecture. They expect future generations to have far more choice in how they move around their cities. The child of, of us. <laughs> We we'll probably uh, walk uh, quite some um, some distance because the neighborhood will be uh, without too much traffic. Jump on a shared car, maybe, that leads then to a connection that probably will take that child into the air and land right on a working place. Flying taxis could be a spectacular urban upgrade, but probably not for the masses. The biggest changes will affect cars, especially our own private ones, of which there are more than one billion worldwide. There will be no boundary anymore between public transportation and individual traffic. Uh, the separation of both has led to the cities that we see today. But what could take the place of private cars? An emissions-free, highly flexible public transport system? Our urban mobility could depend on vehicles like the Mover. The tech underpinning the Mover comes from a German company, Schaeffler. It's meant to demonstrate how one platform can fulfill many needs. First, the Mover can be used for the transport of people, as well as with slight modifications for the transport of goods. During daylight, traffic, transport of people, and during the night, transport of goods, whatever. In Germany, cars sit unused for 23 hours a day on average, each wasting about 12 square meters in parking space. That's as big as the typical German child's bedroom. In the US, cities like Houston are struggling to overcome decades of urban planning that has given more space to cars than anything else. We have reduced the dimensions of the vehicle, of course. We achieved that by moving the drive units into the wheels themselves, placing technical components as far into the corners as possible to make more interior space usable. And that frees up space on the roads. Shrinking vehicle footprints are just one part of Scheffler's mobility vision. This award-winning prototype can carry four people to their destination cleanly, autonomously, and flexibly. The city will drastically change as we share mobility, if it is public or, or private, leaving the possibility for 
the city to come back to the people, meaning we need less parking spots. Uh, parking will be organized. We basically need the cars or the airplanes or the drones, whatever it is, to land. And so we need new spaces, new spaces where we change transportation. In the near future, digital networking will drive our mobility. Scheffler's idea foresees people using autonomous vehicles from a fleet working 24-7. These multifunctional emissions-free vehicles could transport people and goods or provide services. By sharing the vehicles, people could free up huge areas of space previously dedicated to parking. But are we really ready to have robots driving everywhere? One major hurdle is legal. Vehicles like that are not really covered by the current legislation. We'll have to make many adjustments to legal frameworks, and the lack of legal security surrounding autonomous vehicles is putting the brakes on development. But can we really afford to lose any more time? The generations of young people who will inherit our cities are already looking for quick and direct ways of improving our urban lives now. We can do two things. Firstly, politically. We can uh, challenge our politicians that we want to have a city where we want to live in, where we don't just see cars and parking lots everywhere, but where we can go everywhere and uh, not afraid that a car will hit us. Um, secondly, uh, we can do it ourselves. We can take the bicycle to work, to university, to school. We can buy a, a pass for the uh, metro for the underground um, and we can take a public transport. The German city of Augsburg is trying to get cars out of the city by offering free public transport in the central zone. Since January 2020, people can also take out a mobility subscription that gives them unlimited access to the city's fleet of bikes and cars. The package costs around three euros fifty per day. It's one change among many that are needed. We need an overall traffic management as well as infrastructure, as well as a payment system, a ticket system and things like this. Of course, future mobility has to be affordable. It might pay for itself with ads like the internet does these days. Just imagine that Driving or mobility is actually clean and for free. Why? Because it's the third place where you can work. The driving is, you know, it's automatic. You don't have to take care of that. It's shared with other people. It's connected. So basically, the people that run advertisements in these third places while you're working, they pay for the ride. So I think a city where we don't have cars uh, has much more space for trees, for plants, um, has much more uh, space for the people, and I think a city without cars can have a lot more opportunities than a city with cars. A city without cars? For many people, that's hard to imagine. But things are beginning to move in that direction. The question is, what do we want to do with the space when the cars have gone? <laughs>